Hi, this is a little power user tip for Cubase, and it's kind of a, a little function in Cubase called offline processing. Uh, it's a very, very powerful feature, and it has to do a lot with what I spoke about earlier in the quick tips about printing your effects or printing all your uh, MIDI parts down to audio. You have this functionality where any audio event that's on a track or in the arrangement page, if you just right click on it, it brings up this drop down menu, and you go to the plugin list here, and it'll display all of your plugins. And at this point, you can pick any plugin you like. Let's say you want to put a little compression on this part. Well, it brings up a little applet where when you press preview, it's going to loop that part. And here you can make any adjustments you want, whether you're working with reverb, compression, EQ, flanger, phaser, however, you know, whatever you want to do to the sound. Once you get to the point where you're happy with what you've got, you can process it. And you can either choose to process just that individual element or all the elements in that track. It gives you the option to do that. And this is very powerful for people that have DSP farms like TC PowerCore or UAD powered plugins uh, because it enables you to use these effects offline and then take them out of the uh, effect slot that you might have been demoing them in, and it frees up a lot of DSP. And the other great thing about this functionality is that if you again right click, go to the same part, and go to the audio drop down menu, offline process history, it brings up a menu here that shows you all the plugins that have applied to that particular audio event. And what's great about this is here you can see I've got UAD DM2, I've got a little uh, slapback, and then I have Nonlin Reverb. If I say I want to change something on the DM2, I can just click on Modify, brings up the DM2 with the previous settings that I used, change my rate or change my wet dry mix, and then press Process. What's going to happen now is it's going to reprocess that plugin and any subsequent plugin that's after that with the original native settings of that particular plugin. So you can imagine that it gets pretty deep when you've got 10, 20 plugins, various different things happening with the sound. You wouldn't have to remember any of that. It remembers everything for you. It's just an extremely, extremely powerful tool.